Just moving these girls back to the other side of the ranch. Stopping by the corral for a few days. So you can see it's a lot of fun. Who knew pigs could herd? I did. So this is one of the times uh, that the animals do come back to a corral. It's time to send off all these little piggies to college. No more living at home, playing video games all day, not doing anything with your life. Time for all these little piggies to leave home and move on to their piggy careers of rooting the forest and making the land healthier. So they had to come back to the corral because they don't want to do that. And we have to get them in a uh, have to get them behind this wire so we can take the mom away. In about three days, they, these little guys can go back out on pasture. But uh, we have to have the indestructo wire so we can take the moms away. So what Adrian and I are doing is walking the moms back out for a couple of days um, to a new area. Um, back out to pasture. And at this point, the moms aren't really arguing with it. They are sick of their kids. So, so um, yeah, so we're sending them back out. And there you have it. Um, so we're walking the sows back out to pasture. Um, to where they can they can hang out for a couple of days while the the there there's a little bit of distance between them and the the piglets. So these girls are kind of at the point where they're grateful to see their kids go off to college. Um, we keep them on the sow a little bit a little bit longer. Um, we found that that creates longevity and health in the in the piglet. So yeah, now you guys get to to walk across the meadow with us, with these girls. They're super excited to be back on, on green feed. You can see them all just chowing down on these plants. After being in the corral for a couple of days, they've just been on green. And uh, yeah, they definitely, definitely miss this. But that's pretty much the only time of year that they, that they come inside. Got a couple of rogue piglets here with us who are just gonna go along for the ride. There's always one or two kids that don't want to leave the nest. <laughs> Neither one of us were those kids, were we, Dan? No. We were no, off for an adventure pretty it was the reverse. pretty quick, pretty excitable there. share with comical to share um, that's a good question that you like big butts and you cannot lie I like big pork butts does her milkshake bring all the boys to the yard <laughs> She's got a chocolate milkshake going on right now. There's a there's a lot of a lot of dirt, a lot of mud. We've gotten some good rain here the last couple of days. Yeah, this is. Kids have been thoroughly enjoying that. It's big dating season at the moment, so I'm trying to think of how to describe to everybody at home the dating process of pigs. But um, well, pigs are very social. I think that's something that people. Um, either don't realize or forget is that uh, yeah you can't just throw them both in the same room and tell them to figure it out they no. kind of they'll attack each other yes well and even that goes for introducing any any new pigs it's not just boys and girls 
that uh, they've got to be they've got to be neighbors for a little while and kind of get accustomed to each other. They got to live in the apartment down the row a little while. Got to see if they like the same music. Exactly. Maybe run see. into each other at the elevator yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, see if they're into the iPhone or the. Uh, We've all seen those sitcoms, Friends, Big Bang. You know all the <laughs> yeah big bang seems slightly inappropriate with pigs oh somehow. sorry i yeah i mean not you know in just the yeah you get the <laughs> idea so once in a while people ask me what does a pig eat just about anything that isn't nailed down as you can see they're chowing down on uh a lot of this regrowth from when we had the cows in here, you get this beautiful green. They love to eat that. Um, and so yeah, they, their whole digestive system is really not that much different than a human's. Um, but they are able to digest uh, things better than, than we would. I, if, 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 if you're watching this at home and think you're going to go outside and go eat a pile of grass, good luck with that. That's not going to go well, and the, uh, yeah, don't do that. But uh, yeah, these guys do a little bit better. They get quite a bit of vitamins and minerals um, from just eating eating plants, but they they'll always need a little bit of grain or something a little higher protein to uh, be able uh, to to get what they need in a day. Um, Like P H A T fat or like and a little bit of oh fat. yeah the biggest challenge yeah <laughs> is is getting a quality protein um, it's really di difficult to get quality proteins into a pig just with plants and they they really don't they don't really grow without that so yeah, we're not out here feeding them goji berries or, or something like that. But, uh, so yeah, it just rained the last few days, so they're all stopping for uh, pigs love puddles. They, uh, that's one of their favorite things. Hi, Feel good. This is Dora, Dora the Explorer. Why did she get that name, Adrian? Because she likes to take over walkabouts. She also is uh, she's a very, very good mom. And so with all of our girls, uh, we're very mindful of our interaction when they've got little itty bitty piglets. And Dora is one who will remind you of what what size bubble she will attack she needs you. between uh, you and her piglets, especially when they're little. Once they're a little older and they're just like punching her every time they're nursing, she's like, "All right, I'm good. Thank you." And she's, she's like, "Mom's day out at the spa." It's exactly what it is. I wouldn't be caught dead in a spa, so I don't really have any good content for that. A good, a good mud bath. Very good for your skin. It's very nourishing. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know you can herd a pig. And pigs are actually really take to it really easy to being able to walk them. We can walk these girls for, for a couple of miles or more if we need to. Um, but it just weather permitting. They they'll uh, they'll get too hot if you do that in the middle of the summer. You got to do it in the early mornings or in the evenings when it cools off a little. Uh, the pigs they don't they can't sweat, uh, and so um, they don't really have a good way to cool off other than a mud puddle or a dust bath. <clears throat> that's why um, yeah that's why you see animals roll in the dirt is that's that's a way to cool down. Dana, I want to talk about pigs and weeds. Pigs and like pots or? Well, it is Colorado, but no, pigs and less desirable plants or noxious weeds. So 
that sow just rooted this up. This is one thing that pigs love is like these milky tap roots. Um, so they'll, they'll root up plants like this, like I think this is a young Canada thistle. And, uh, and they love to chew on, if I can get it open, they love to chew on these, these roots um, and kind of that milky tap root. And so that's part of our weed management plan is that it's a food for somebody. It might not be very desirable um, as far as like, oh man, I would love it if this species of plant grows. But you can see here, like somebody bit off the end of that real pokey leaf. Go uh, try um, to feed it to a sow, see if she'll eat it. There we go. But so that's, that's what we do about weeds is that, well, like that little piglet, see him chewing on, I think he's got maybe some nappy. Yeah, I can't zoom in on that. Um, or here, this gal, she's she's rooting and eating that that thistle. Um, you know, that's something that most people would would either spray. Oh, there she goes. Yes, well done. Um, so most folks would either spray a, a um, spray that in order to to get rid of that. You'd pull it, something like that. Instead, she's like, damn straight, this is tasty. Like, I, I want to eat this. And so, so that's, yeah, that's how we, that's how we manage weeds. Turn it into food for somebody. Find somebody who wants to eat it. What about the stuff that nobody wants to eat? Then we trample it. Uh, we're slacking on the job over here on oh, the... Sorry. Uh, yeah, we got pigs who are kind of going, what is that? walk this way, Dan. Is that the starboard side or is that port? I'm not sure. I have no idea. I'm from, from a land-based... All right, you got those? Yes, I got those. Those girls did not want to go to the left. They are right-wing pigs. Alrighty, we'll uh, circle back with you in a minute. Okay, guys. Time to go, ladies. <clears throat> More stragglers. Hey. Come on. Back that way. Mm -hmm. All right, sugar cakes. Can you run up there and grab the uh, gate? Where is it at? Uh, right up to the right. Okay. Right So, good thing to touch on here while we're uh, taking everybody with on a pig move is this is an area that we did a little bit of logging. Yeah, so why, why cut a tree? That's one of the hardest, it's one of the things, you know, when we, when we talk about cutting a tree down, there's a, there's a, there's a way of doing forestry that makes the forest healthier. And that means cutting some of the trees. When we cut some of the trees down, especially in a really dry forest where we're at in Colorado, which is mostly ponderosa pine. See how beautiful that understory is? Nice bunch of grass. Uh, this is a little denser trees. 
on the left and on the right you can see them spaced out a little a little spacey the reason why we cut the forest to look more like the right instead of the left is to encourage a really healthy understory like what you see here and that is what creates really healthy wildlife it's that tree spacing keeps uh, wildfires from being able to get out of control um, and the forest naturally does that it naturally gets this more park-like look when it burns a lot and it makes it way more fire resilient when we get really dense like over here fire gets into that and that's all she wrote you can't shut it off whereas behind us when it's spaced out when the fire gets through there falls down from the canopy back to the grass cools off a little maybe goes out on its own or firefighters can put it out if they need to so that's one of the one of the ways or one of the things we touch on a lot is um, why we cut trees here on the ranch and why we use the pigs to make the forest healthier they grind all those pine needles into that beautiful stuff on the right so the stuff on the left where the pigs were might look kind of ugly for a period of time a year later skadoosh that's what it looks like that's a great place to be a bird a bug a deer an elk whereas over there that's totally covered in pine needles it looks like it does now there's not a whole lot of whole lot of plants a whole lot of habitat uh, cover for other critters so yeah I hope that kind of gives you an idea for why we do that and we've made it with the sows Adrian's got them locked in there they are going to get a drink up there and we'll leave them up here for a couple of days um, is kind of a holdover or in a having a bit of a layover on their way to Houston um, and then we'll put them in an area on the other side of the ranch um, and bring the boars in and that'll be slightly entertaining and slightly inappropriate video when that comes out <laughs>